You know, one of my favorite quotations is Christ's Object Lessons, page 6 to 9. Note it. It's a beautiful quotation. And it gives urgency to the times in which we're living. It says, Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in the church. And that when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim us as his own. It is our privilege not only to look for, but to hasten his coming. So based on what we just heard, how do we hasten the second coming of Christ? By having what reproduced in us? The character of Christ. The character of Christ. Kneel with me as we spend a few moments in prayer. I hope you all had a peaceful rest last night. All right? Amen? Amen. Amen. And if not, it's the day of rest. Let's rest in Jesus Christ today. Father in heaven, we bow before you in your presence. Safe to serve here locally. And those joining us online, safe to serve international, even first time viewers. We gather in your presence and we are pleading the fulfillment of that statement in our lives. The character of Christ perfectly reproduced in us. Reveal to us what truth is to, even today. The truth that we must obey and give us strength to obey the will, the desire, the love to surrender all to you. Be with the children who are here, the youth, the adults. Pour out your spirit upon us today. Reveal to us Jesus Christ. Reveal to us present truth. Reveal to us the great work that must be finished right now. A twofold work. Reveal that twofold work to us even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, feed us with bread from heaven's bakery. We pray. Amen. Amen. If I were to ask you a question, who Seventh-day Adventists are, what would be your response? Who are Seventh-day Adventists? Christians? No? Who are Seventh-day Adventists? Commandment keepers, Sabbath keepers. What else? Who are Seventh-day Adventists? What now? A peculiar people? Remnant? They are awaiting, preparing, preparing others for the second advent of Jesus Christ. And simultaneously, they are obeying God's Ten Commandments, even the seventh day Sabbath. Seventh day Adventist. As we go throughout this study today, I'm going to reveal to you who truly are seventh day Adventist Christians. Not mere professors of Sabbath keeping, not mere professors of preparing for the second coming, but there is a great work, a great what? Great a great work that Seventh day Adventists must understand and must finish. And it's a twofold work that must be finished. A what work? A twofold work. However, before I segue into that, I'm going to share with you that right now we're living in the last days. If I were to ask you a question right now, what are some of the signs the Bible predicted would precede the second coming of Christ? What are some signs you, will, you would relate to me? What are some of those signs? Second coming, what? Wars, what else? Pestilences, what else? What now? Calamities. What else? 
False prophecy. What else? All right. What about Lot? What about Lot? What are we told in the Bible about Lot in Luke 17? As it was in whose day? Lot. And what was happening down there in Gomorrah in Sodom? Now, what month are we now in right now? What month? June. What happened June 26th, 2015? What happened? Do you recall? What's that? Six years ago? Do you recall that? The sodomy law, friends, same-sex marriage is now the what? The law of the United States of America. And as a result, what do they label the month of June? Contextually, pr gay pride month. Not just pride, but gay pride sodomy pride month. Because <laughs> biblically, gay means you're happy. Contextually, gay, you're happy. But now they have robbed the word gay from its original context. And now they have given to it a sodomic context. Sodomy, man with man. What if I shared with you it is rife within the SDA movement? Look at all these universities, all of them. Top to bottom, row and row. Now focus here on this bottom left corner. What school is that? Walla Walla University. Now watch carefully. This came out June 2nd on Fulcrum 7. Headline says, Walla Walla University associate students, what do they host? Gay pride event. Now in their backyard, at their homes, in their living rooms. No, we are friends. On a seventh day Adventist school property. So where are the administrators? Where are they? Where are they? Have you ever seen a, a bunch of grapes before? And some of the grapes on that vine began to rot, were rotten. And because that rotten grape sat and sit so close to the other one, the whole wholesome grape, what happened to the wholesome grape after a while? It, be, it begins to rot. Have you ever bought, bought some vegetables in a bag, even onions? You, 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 all right. So what are we seeing here about influence and negative influence? This is the actual Facebook page, Instagram page rather, the Associated Students of Walla Walla University. Look at the red box, right column. In the middle it says Pride Month, Pride Month, Pride Month. Notice, the people you love. Look at the red box there. It says, tomorrow, June 2nd, 5.30 p.m. through 7.30 p.m. at the ASWW tent. They actually had a tent, not for an evangelistic meeting. Well, they're winning souls, but not winning souls to Christ, but winning souls to Satan. Notice, it says, we will be having, red box, an event where we will be displaying and explaining many different LGBTQIA plus flags and identities. We will be serving cookies and what's that? Pronoun pins and mini flags will be handed out as well. Hope to see you here. Hope to see you here. And friends, we ought not to be shocked and horrified in some sense. Why is that so? These things were prophesied. Amen. And the more you say we shouldn't talk about this, is the more by God's grace I'm going to talk about it. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus chapter 32, what were God's professed people doing at the base of Mount Sinai? Were they eating? Were they drinking? Anything wrong with those two things? But they were eating and drinking in a perverted way. And then it says, they rose up to play. What does it mean that they rose up to play? Orgy. Right there. And what was Aaron doing? Silent. But what did Moses do? After spending time in prayer for the people, Moses came down to call them to repentance. So you can say, don't talk about this. By God's grace, I'm going to lift my voice like a trumpet and show the professed
people of God their sins and call them to repentance before it is too late. The work must be finished. Last Sabbath in Numbers chapter 25, we saw on the borders of Canaan, the banks of the Jordan River, while Moses and the leaders of Israel were praying. What did Zimri do? Do you, do you recall that? Zimri took a wife, no, a woman from the Midianites, brought her in the camp, and we have young minds here. You know what they were doing in the camp. Great apostasy, fornication, and what did Phineas do? He rose up and took a javelin, application, the word of God, and he what? Condemned, he slew both Zimri and Cosby in the very act. And that transpired on the borders of Canaan. So what will happen in the last days? Will it be repeated? Gross fornication, sodomic practices in the church. Now do you recall, what does the name Zimri mean? That prince in Israel, Numbers 25, Zimri. Anyone recall? Zimri. Zimri means music. Praise, celebration, and what does Cosby mean? Anyone remember? Deception, and both were committing. They joined together, so join their names. Deceptive music, and we are told, my friends, in Selected Messages, book 2, and page number 36, when the apostate music is played, the senses of rational beings, will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. You can say, don't talk about this. It's the more I'm going to preach about this by God's grace. But wait a minute. What does Phineas mean? Phineas. Phineas. Put it down. Phineas means boldness. Mercy. Apostasy. Grows in the church. God needs a bold voice. Boldness. Phineas. To trust. Phineas. It means to protect. Protector. Phineas. And the Bible says in Numbers 25 uh, that God made a covenant of peace with Phineas and his uh, posterity. Why? Because Phineas did not fear people's faces. Amen. Phineas represents the words of, what's that? Education, page 57. The greatest bond of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in the innermost souls are true and honest. Men who will not be afraid to cause sin by its right name. Men who will be as true to duty as the needle is to the pole. Men who will stand for the right. Though the heavens fall, modern day Phineas says, we are in a crisis, my friends. And the work must be finished, not by promoting sodomy, oh no, my friends, but by promoting living, teaching, and preaching Bible truth, teaching present truth. Amen. I'm going to say going to something else. Ready? Have you ever heard the idiom? I smell a rat. What does that mean? You know, I smelled a rat. Have you ever smelled a rat? Have you ever gone to a place and it was just, you know, condemned? And you walked inside and you, all right. What does it mean, I smell a rat? What does it mean, my friends? To smell a rat means what? A sense that something is not right. Suspect, you suspect trickery. You suspect deception. You realize that something is not as it is supposed to be. You suspect that something is wrong. Something is wrong. That is happening. I smell a rat. What am I talking about now? What was so deceptive? I smelled a rat dealing with the issue of pestilence 19. Look at the screen right here, friends. Again, 
This is trending. Top, Dr. Anthony, his email bolsters the lab leak theory. Have you heard about this, friends? When they're actually saying now, it is clear that Pestilence 19 actually was man-made man -made and came from the lab there in China. All right, friends. And of course, you have others. Bottom, Dr. Anthony finally admits Pestilence 19 may have come from a, a lab leak after his emails exposed. I've been covering this just as lately as May 12th, 2021. It's right there on our YouTube page right here. Back woman leaked on Dr. Anthony. That's it, friends. Juiced up pestilences. Satanic scientists work in what? Laboratories. And what caused me to smell the rat ever since Pestilence 19 broke? Because great controversy. Page 589 says that Satan has studied the secrets of the laboratories of nature. And I'm telling you, he's going to work through his human agents to create pestilences, bring about calamities. And we're told, it's right there, that led me to smell a rat. Very suspicious. I'm going somewhere with this. Buckle your seatbelts. And the next statement is great controversy. Page 589, the very ones we're told in great controversy who are promoting to be great physicians. We want to help America. We want to heal the global family from pestilence are the very same ones who are bringing the disease and disaster until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. As a result, I smelt a rat. Watch. Now you're seeing it, my friends. Lawmakers call for Dr. Anthony resignation or firing immediately amid pestilence 19 flip-flops. Notice here, friends, Rand Paul gives two-word response to Dr. Anthony's unearthed, uncovered emails. What do you think those two words were? Now, I'll give you three. I told you. I'll give you four. I told you so. Blue words. I told you. Blue words. Can't wait to see the media now try to spin Dr. Anthony's emails. I told you. I smelt a rat. Look at this, friends. Mr. Carlson criticizes media over Dr. Anthony's emails. Just the next five words. Dr. Anthony is like Jesus for many people. On this issue of combating pestilence 19, whatever he says, just go along with it, even if you have to give up your liberties, give up your religious persuasion. He has now become Jesus to the people. But he said, people who don't believe in God, I wonder, could this statement be applied to profess SDAs? When our people, leaders have been saying, your immune system is not enough. With, with, with no qualifications. And if you don't go along, Dr. Carol Allen stated, I'm going to share that with you. She actually said, if you do not take the pestilence 19 panacea, God is not going to heal you if you contract that disease. A doctor within the Seventh-day Adventist communion. Community, that's what I mean. Now, the next slides are going to be like a uh, time, time lapse, you know, when things move fast, time lapse. Because I'm not going to spend time on this. I'm going somewhere with this. Watch carefully. This is the most recent. I'll read this one. June 4th, that was yesterday, 2021, Facebook Adventist Review. Watch this statement, red box. Regardless of the consequences, the pestilence 19 inoculations shine light at the end of the tunnel. What, what are they praising? 
Worldwide, as of May 2021, one billion shots have been given. Inoculation centers, even SDA churches on the Sabbath, have been set up throughout the U.S. to provide accessibility to those, and it goes on. What are they promoting? I'm going to share with you something here. Here comes the segment. I'm going to rapidly move through this. There, there is Elder Ted Wilson. What is he promoting? Pestilence 19. There it is, friends. Jose Cortez Jr. used SDA churches as uh, inoculation sites. Oakwood University promoting the same. Not talking about medical. Come back here. The emphasis is not on medical missionary work. When now we have the opportunity, it's promoting Babylon's elixir. There it is, friends. All right, you have on the West Coast, Loma Linda. I'm going somewhere. Loma Linda again. I'm going somewhere with this. Even in Europe, I'm going somewhere. What are they promoting? Come back to America. West Coast, Valley Crossroads, SDA Church. All right, Mount Sinai, SDA in, or in Orlando. Here she is, Dr. Carol Allen. God is not going to heal you if you don't take this pestilence. 19, Nostrum, past that, won't spend time there. Even in Jamaica, Glenn Samuels promoting such thing. Even in Jamaica, Pastor Everett Brown, union president. It's there, friends, all over. What about Zimbabwe? There it is. Even in Africa, SDAs, union conference promoting such. Where am I going with this? I'll soon tell you. Advent Health, SDA, institution of health, medical, hospital, system. There it is, friends. Even 3ABN promoting such thing. All those doctors. It's clear. Where am I going with this? Watch carefully. North American Division of Seventh-day Adventists promoting the pestilence 19. And of course, they have their disguise. Well, you have your choice. Of course, we have choice. So why are you pushing such things? Where am I going with this, my friends? Watch the statement now. Volume 5, page 80. You need to mark this. We are told, my friends, those who have rendered supreme homage to science falsely so-called will not be the what? The leaders then. All those men who are promoting Babylon's panacea, they will not be the leaders of God's people in the closing work of this earth's history. Again, those who have rendered supreme homage to science falsely so-called will not be the leaders then. Those who have trusted to intellect, genius, or talent will not then stand at the head of rank and file. They're going to be passed by they did not keep pace with the light. Blue words. Those who have proved themselves unfaithful will not then be trusted with whom? The flock in the last solemn work. Few great men will be engaged. Why? They are self-sufficient. They are the ones who are independent. They are independent of God. And God cannot watch, friends. God cannot use them. Few great men. They are not leaning towards what the medical professionals say. At the same time, demoting Bible health. Is that clear, friends? Bible health. And if science now augments medical missionary evangelism, Bible health, then we accept science. But science cannot be used to supersede Bible principles. It becomes science falsely so-called. Do you remember in the days of Noah? Why did many not get on board the ark? Why? Who were they listening to? Look at the screen. It says they were listening to, red words, the scientists as it was not only in the days of Lot, but in whose days? Whose days? In the days of Noah, the scientists. And what did they call Noah? They called Noah, my friends, 
a wild fanatic. It's right there, friends. Next quote. Red words. A wild fanatic. He's a mere alarmist. A deluded old man. Well, give me the old paths. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord. Stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and you shall find rest unto your souls rest unto your souls but many will say we will not walk therein which way do you want the new way or the old way man's way or god's way it's right there on the screen my friends again those who appear to the world as a great physician they're the same ones that will bring the disease and disaster and the second paragraph says when you see this what comes next? A false system of religious faith. What is that, friends? It's Sunday worship by law. Go with me to Revelation chapter 18. I'm going to segue now into our Bible study. Are you ready, my friends? Are you ready? Do you see how close we are to the end? And would the calamities become more frequent and more disastrous? Will they become more frequent and more disastrous yes until what is enforced on the screen sunday rest by law how close are we my friends it's time to get ready it's time to receive up the former and the latter rain that's what we're going to continue to study the former and the latter rain revelation chapter 18. now look with me at verse number one what does the Bible say? Who does the Bible say will descend from heaven? An angel. And what does this angel have? Great power. What happens to the earth? The earth will be lightened with his glory. For what purpose? To evangelize. And what did the disciples need in Acts chapter 1? You know it. And verse number 8, in order for them to carry the gospel to the whole earth, what did they need? Did they need the Holy Spirit? Go to Acts chapter 1. And what does the Bible say would be the effect of receiving the Holy Ghost? The Bible says, and you shall receive power. What's that word? Power. power once the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the outermost parts of the earth we need power the power of the Holy Ghost but what was the response to the disciples from God's professed people the Jews of that day did they mock the messengers did they mock God's people? Go to Acts chapter 2. Look at verse 12. And they, Acts 2 verse 12, and they were all amazed and were in doubt. Many were saying, what mean is all of this? Verse 13, others mocking said, these men are what friends? Are full of new wine, calling God's people drunk. Hold on there. Not only, go to Acts 4, not only did they mock God's messengers, just like many of you may be mocking me right now in your minds, some of you online, possibly, because God's words are agitating you. <laughs> you mock to your own detriment. I'll still pray for you. I'll still love you. Acts chapter 4, not only did they mock God's messengers, but the Bible says in verse number 17 mark it and verse number 29 the bible says they actually threaten god's servants they actually braced themselves to resist the message that was the response of god's professed people as the disciples received the former rain and were presenting present truth of that day so how will God's professed people respond 
to God's messengers who are preaching present truth in these last days. They will brace themselves to resist the message. I'm going to give you a quote now to confirm the scriptures. Ready for it? In the 1888 messages, page 765, I won't quote that one, 765, it says this. Watch carefully. There is to be in the churches a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. But, but, is that not the lottery? A wonderful manifestation of the power of God? That's the lottery. But, it says, it, let's read that, come on. It will what? It will not move upon those who have not humbled themselves before the Lord and opened the door of the heart by confession and repentance. Next sentence. In the manifestation of what, friends? That power which lightens the earth with the glory of God. Is that Revelation 18 verse 1? They will see only something which in their what? Could you kind of put that word down, blindness? They will see something which in their blindness, they think how dangerous, something which will arouse their fears. And what will they do now? Red words. They will brace themselves to resist it. So how will they respond to God's messengers who are experiencing Revelation 18 verse 1 and presenting present truth? They will what? Brace themselves against present truth, they will resist present truth, resist the latterine experience. Which also means that they will resist the former reign experience. Victory over sin. Do you know who these people are primarily? Leaders. Watch this. Next paragraph. It says, because the Lord does not work According to their interest, their ideas and expectations, they will do what, friends? Oppose the work. In our churches? Yes. Oppose the work. Do you know what they say next? Sister White quotes them. Why should not we know the Spirit of God hmm. when we have been in the work so many years? I don't care what that pastor Henrique is, is, is preaching. I've been a seven-day Adventist for years. I've never heard such thing. I'm going to reject what he's saying. That's exactly what Sister White is saying right here. Is that point clear, my friend? Go to Acts chapter 4. Look with me at verse number 31. And while many, the Bible says, will brace themselves to resist present truth, when the former rain fell, in Acts chapter 2, how many people were baptized in one day? How many friends? 3,000. Acts 2, verse 41, verse 47. How many were baptized in Acts 4 and verse 4? 5,000. Go to Acts chapter 4. Acts 4, look at verse 31. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were what, friends? All what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And they spake the word of God with what? Boldness. And whose name means boldness? Oh, you remembered. Phineas, go to verse 32. And how many came in? What's that word? What's the third word in verse 32, my friends? Multitudes came in as they were filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to ask you a question. When the disciples went to reap the harvest of souls on the day of Pentecost, who was the person that had sown the gospel seed? For them to be able to reap those souls, 3,000, 5,000, a great multitude. It was whom? It was Jesus Christ. Go to John chapter 4. That means when the latter rain falls 
and we bring in, it's falling now, but it falls in great measure. And we go forward to gather in the souls after the Sunday law crisis. It means something must be sown before. What is that? The gospel. It must be so now. Where are we going to, my friends? John chapter 4. And look with me at verse number 36 of John chapter 4. Are we there, my friends? The Bible says, And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice how? Together, verse number 37, and herein is that same true. One sows and another reaps, picks the fruit. Verse 38, Christ now says, I sent you disciples to reap that whereon you bestowed what? No labor, praise God. Other men, lay hold on there, come to the screen. Acts of the Apostles. Page 44, I won't read all of this. Look at the red words. Red word says, the conversions that took place on the day of Pentecost were the result of what? This sowing, the harvest of Christ's work, my friends, revealing the power of his teaching. So who sowed those seeds? Who sowed those seeds? Look at the second sentence. During Christ's life on this earth, he had what? Sown the seed of truth and what? Had watered it with his blood. Next quotation. Ah, oh, friends, you know what? Do you remember last week I shared with you? When we go to give the world the final warning to come from Babylon into Seventh-day Adventism, Bible Christianity, present truth, it's not going to be a new message that we're preaching. What would be the difference? Do, do you recall? What now? We are the ones who are converted. Do you remember I spoke about the lamp? The wick? The light in the lamp? And the what around the lamp? The lampshade. And many times the smoke creates a cloud on the inner of the lampshade. And what must you do to get a brighter light? clean that lampshade. So what will bring this lettering power without measure, great light to lighten the whole earth? What must happen within? We must be fully cleansed. From how many sins? From all sins. And that's what this is saying. Watch carefully. The arguments of the apostles alone, though clear, and convincing would not have removed the prejudice that had withstood so much evidence. Pause right there before I read. The next sentence, do you have co-workers who are prejudiced against truth? Do you have neighbors who are prejudiced, meaning they are rejecting your plant-based diet eating? They are rejecting your Sabbath-keeping teaching. Rejecting your dress reform, lifestyle, and teaching. But when the latter end falls, in full measure, we are told the truth will cut through unbelief. Do you know why? Our vessels are completely cleansed. Not only arguments, no friends, red words, but the Holy Spirit send the arguments home to ear, to heart with what? Divine power. We're told, watch carefully, great controversy, page 611, page 612. Do you know what must be so now? The truth. What are some of the ways we can sow the truth right now? To reap the harvest in the time of the Sunday law. How should we sow the seeds of truth right now? Any examples? How? I'm, come on, talk. Talk to me. What now? In our lives, health, health books, what else? Look at this right here. Look at this. Look at the blue words. It says, the arguments have been presented. The seed has been sown. And now, it will spring up and bear what? Fruit. The publications, the what? 
the publications distributed by missionary workers have what? Exerted their influence. Yet, many whose minds were impressed have been prevented from fully comprehending the truth or from yielding obedience. Now, when the latter end falls, yes, friends, in full measure, those who were hindered by parents, by children, by husband, by wife, by brother, by sister, by circumstances, from accepting present truth, will now be set free from captivity. What will make the difference? Two things. You sow the gospel seeds now, and the latter in falling without measure. This will cause the Holy Spirit now to cut to what? Unbelief. And souls are going to be one to the work. Go to John chapter 4. Do you want to be a part of this work? Amen. So what must we now do? Sow seeds. Yesterday, the elders and I, Duane and Richard, we went to a particular business yesterday, speaking to a particular gentleman. And in the process, I said, where are the truthful literatures? Go get the books. And by God's grace, we were able to sow seeds of truth. Do you know why you sow seeds? Naturally, you are expecting a harvest. Oranges, amen, friends, corn. So why do we sow seed in the spiritual sense? We are expecting what? A harvest. So with my words, sharing truth, he claimed to be a Roman Catholic, sharing truth. But oh, he loved Bob Marley, he told me. Mm -hmm. Love burning spear. Oh yes, love all of these things. And yet, as I began to ask him, and the entering wedge I used was, do you have a large family? He said yes. So I asked, is there anyone in your family that goes to church on Saturday? He said, uh, let me think. And I, I dug deeper. Is anyone in your family a Seventh-day Adventist? He said, oh, your eyes are all open up now. Stop the testimony. John chapter 4. <laughs> Come to verse number 35. Notice what was on the mind of Christ. <laughs> Look at verse 34, friends. What two things were on the mind of Christ? Can somebody tell me? What two things were on the mind of Christ? In verse 34, what now? What two things? Give me one. The first thing he said. To do the will of my Father. Put that down. Who are Seventh-day Adventists? Those who do the will of God. These are Seventh-day Adventists. Put that down. What's the second thing? That was on the mind of Christ based on John 4, 34. To finish the work. Who are Seventh-day Adventists? Christians, those who allow Jesus to finish the work. What work? It's a twofold work, my friends. Now write this down. Put down Mark chapter 14, please. Mark chapter 14 and verse number 36. Now many times, Mark 14, 36, many times, you take notes. You go back home, it doesn't really line up as you thought it would. So write down... I must do the will of my Father. John chapter 4 is at the beginning of Christ's earthly ministry. John 4. What was on the mind of Christ in Gethsemane? What was a part of Christ's prayer in Gethsemane? As he's wrestling three times. Father, what now? If it's possible, we know it. Let this cup pass. Not according to my will, but what? But thy will be done. What was on the mind of Christ then at the closing scene of his earthly ministry? Not my will, but thy will be done. That's it. And what says Philippians 2 and verse number 5? You know it. Let this finish it. Thank you so much. One more time. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So what was on the mind of Christ? Lord, not my will, but what? 
but thy will be done. This must be on the minds of Seventh-day Adventists who are Seventh-day Adventist Christians, those who say, Lord, not my will, but what? Thy will be done. What's that second thing on the mind of Christ in John chapter 4 and verse number 34? Let's read that. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Number two, and what now? Come on. And to finish the work. All right. This was at the beginning of Christ's earthly ministry. What was on the mind of Christ at the close of his earthly ministry? Can somebody go to John chapter 17 and look with me at verse number 4? Who are Seventh-day Adventists? All right. John chapter 17. Look with me at verse number 4. Are we there, my friends? Shall we read that together? What it says. Christ speaking. Gethsemane. I have what? Glorified thee on the earth. I have what? Finished the work. Hold on. What, to think, what is connected to Christ saying, I have finished the work? I have what? The first phrase. I have what? So watch now. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have what? Finished the work. Hold on then. What says Revelation 18 verse 1? This angel descends, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his what? Glory, which means that angel represents God's messengers. They will lighten the earth with God's glory, which means what has been done in them. A finished, a finished, one more time, a finished work. That's it, friends. We can never receive the latter rain in its full power unless a specific work is finished. We're in us. Then we can go forward and present that message. Present your testimony of how Jesus finished that work in you. And as the world now gets an opportunity to know intellectually about the finished work. As they surrender that number, surrenders, and Christ now finishes that same work in their lives, do you know what Christ will then do? Not sit. What will he then do? He will stand up, and what will he then say? Eat. Oh, it is done. It is done. Finish, then salvation and redemption can completely be a finished, done, completed work. Does that make sense, my friends? Who are Seventh day Adventists? How long did Jesus say he had to finish the work? Do you recall how long he said? Forever? Forever? Go to John 9. Is Christ going to take forever to finish the work? What says John chapter 9? Father in heaven, please, your God, pour out your spirit upon us even more. Give us greater unction, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Show us who Bible-believing Christians are. Show us who true Seventh-day Adventist Christians are. Show us the experience of your remnant people, that we will not give you mere lip service, but heart service amen. is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How long did Christ have? John chapter 9. Are we there, my friend? What says verse number 4 of John chapter 9? Are we there? Read that with me. I must what? Work the works of him that sent me. While it is day. Why? The night cometh when what? When no man can work. How long then did Christ say he would have to work? Until night. Until night. Next, next point. Come on, we're in class. Class is in session. We're in class. Next point. Then how does the... Now, he wants a pencil. He wants a pen. Can somebody help him, friends? A pen, pencil right here. We're in class. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Put the night 
the night cometh when no man can work, my friends. Does anyone know how to clearly define the work of Christ? Or are we simply going to tell people that Christ is in heaven? Heaven is sanctuary. If they ask you, what is he doing there? Can you specifically, succinctly define his work? Watch carefully. John chapter 9, put down the night cometh when no man, that means even Christ, when no man can work. What does night represent in the Bible? Night, night, the close of probation. Put that down. Night represents the close of probation probation, which means, no big words, which means you no longer have the opportunity to be saved. It's over. Is there anybody in the New Testament that comes to your mind? Night caught him. It's a him, male. Night caught him, and there's no more opportunity given to him. His salvation had ended even while he was alive. Thank you. Judas Iscariot Write down John chapter 13. Put down verse number 27 of John 13, verse 27, and verse number 30. That's number one. Night also has a secondary application. Night when no man can work. Anybody knows that, my friends? Night, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh. When no man, no man can work. What, what would night represent also? Death, death my, hmm, Sister Henrique. Death, put it down. Death, my first night. Think about this. Is the dead conscious? Can the dead work? Can the dead think? The dead communicate? Can the dead praise God? No. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 18, verse 19. The dead the grave cannot praise thee. That's not the text you must write down. That was simply a passing point. All right, verse 18, verse 19. Write down Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 10. The Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand, if you know it, say it with me, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it. With all thy might. Why? For there is no work, no wisdom, no knowledge, no device in the grave whither thou goest. No work in the grave where you go. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. When you go to the grave, you cannot work. The grave, death, represents night for your souls, my friends. Does anyone know when we will die? Do you know your date to die? So when must we ask God to finish that work in us? Now, can we be alive and spurn, rejected God's mercies as a result, our salvation closes. There's no other opportunity to be saved like Judas Iscariot. Is the answer yes? So when must I surrender? When must I ask God, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done tomorrow or today? Today, my friends, just as Judas left God's presence, left church, home church that day, it was night for his soul. John 13, 30. Can we leave here today and it's night for our souls? Can you online, Safe to Surf International, first 10 viewers, close your cell phone, close that browser, close your computer, shut down, power down your television, and it's night for your soul? When must we ask God then to finish that work? Go to John chapter 9. Can somebody look at verse number 2? No. Scan verse 1. By the way, you know the story. Look at verse 1 through verse 7 of John chapter 9 and tell me, my friends, what was the context of Christ saying, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh and no man can work. What work was he doing contextually? What work was he doing? 
Healing, be more specific. Healing, what, he healed the paralytic? Healing, you mean he healed the woman with the issue of blood? He restored sight to the blind. I wonder what the application is. This was that work to give the blind sight. What's wrong with lukewarm Laodiceans? Revelation 3, verse 17. Verse 18, what's wrong with lukewarm Laodiceans? They are what? They are blind. But how do they think they are? That they are rich, increased with goods, and are in need of. They don't see their need. Verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, white raiment, and what's number three? And to anoint your eyes with Isaac, that thou mayest see. Now, what is akin to anointing? Naturally, normally, what do you use to anoint somebody? Oil. Who is the oil a symbol of? The Holy Spirit. So what is that work then? The final work to give to his people what? Anointing. What is that, my friends? The holy oil. What is that? The power of the Holy Spirit, that they may see their need. Need of what? <laughs> what we lack. What do we lack? We lack the character of Jesus Christ. That's what we lack. Father in heaven, please, may we see our need today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go to John chapter 9 and skip on down to the last three verses. My friends, write this down. The finished work is to have sins taken away. Again, if someone asks you, what is the primary, the ultimate, what did I say, friends? Primary, ultimate work of Christ in heaven, it is to take away our surrendered sins, period. That's the most succinct way to put it. Go to John chapter 9. Look at verse 38. Verse 38 says, watch carefully. Go to verse 39. And Jesus said, for what, friends? Judgment. I'm come into this world that they which see might not see mercy. And that they which see might be made blind. Look at verse 40. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words. And said unto Jesus, Lord, are we blind? They were being very facetious. Are we blind? Christ was not up for humor that day. Look at verse number 41. Jesus now said, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But because you have said, we are not blind. What did, you, what did Christ now say? Therefore, your sin." Remaineth. What does that mean your sin remains? Your sin re remain where? Remain on you. On you. But what was the mission of Jesus Christ? Based on John chapter 1 and verse number 29. Behold. Finish it. The Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. But those who say, I don't have any need, I see, I'm okay, your sin remains a finished work. Now, where did Christ begin to take away sins? Now, comprehend my question. At which specific place did Christ begin literally to take away man's sins? Where? Specifically. Come on, you know it. Come on. Don't be afraid. At the cross. On Calvary's cross. What did Christ say in John 19 verse 30? What three words? What three words? It's akin to I must finish the work. What did Christ say, friends? It is. Go to John chapter 19 with me. John chapter 19. It is finished. A finished work. I want to ask you a question, friends. Did salvation end on the cross? 
How do you know it's not, it wasn't finished at the cross? How do you know? Because, friends, if salvation was finished at the cross, then all we have to do is just keep on sinning and Christ will save us. That's what many teach. That salvation was finished at the cross because Christ says it is finished. When I ask you a question, was it really finished? What was finished at the cross? Come on, what was finished at the cross? Who are Seventh-day Adventists? Your neighbor asks you, what did Christ mean when he said, it is finished, John 19, 30. How would you respond? What was finished at the cross? What? Come on, brother. His earth and ministry was finished. Say more than that. Hint, hint. That's okay. We're together here. Hint. The sanctuary. The cross typified what in the sanctuary? Layout. Sanctuary layout. What? What? The altar of sacrifice. Question now. Was the work finished at the cross? It was the finishing of one of two steps. Where else was the priest now to take the blood and bring it to where? In the, in the sanctuary and sprinkle that blood where? On the veil. When was it clean now? When was the veil that had the blood? The blood typified the sins that were surrendered. On what day now? Was the veil cleansed? Sanctuary cleansed. Sins blotted out, taken away, and placed on what? Scapegoat. On what day? What day, my friends? On the day of atonement. Question. Question, is the work then finished? No. What leg are we on? The first or second leg? Which one? The first or last? The last leg. Where is Christ right now? In the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And what is Christ's desire? To take away what? Sin. To blot out sin. If it was finished at the cross... What then does Revelation 16 and verse 17 mean? What three words do you recall from that scripture? What words were heard from the heavenly sanctuary? Which is synonymous to it is finished. What three words? It is done. Revelation 16, go there with me. That's how you prove the cross was only the finishing of one of two steps. Amen. Because Revelation 16, look now at verse 17. Are we there, my friends? Verse 17, what does the Bible say? And the seventh angel put out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out from where? From where, my friends? The temple. Where is the temple? In heaven. And what were those words? It is Done. That's it, friends. It is finished at the cross. The altar of sacrifice. Where's Christ now? Heavenly sanctuary, most holy place. For what purpose? To, to take away sins. Now what scripture shows us, the taking away of sins and placing those sins on the typical Satan, the scapegoat. What's that scripture? The clearest scripture. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 16. Go there with me, my friends. Clear friends. Leviticus 16. This is the finished work. Amen. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Why? The night cometh when no man can what, friends? Can work. Leviticus chapter 16. Look at verse number 20. Can you all kindly read that verse with me? Verse 20, what it says, my friends. And when he hath made what? What's that word? End. So when does salvation end? Not in the courtyard, at the altar. That's the first it is finished. Then you move where? Into the most holy place now. Day of atonement now. When the work is at its end. What must happen to God's people? Go to verse 21. Verse 21, and Aaron, who typifies Christ, shall lay 
both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him how much? All the iniquities of the Israelites, how much again? All their transgressions, how much again? And all their sins and put them where? So my friends, how much of our sins must be given to Christ? So Christ can put them on the live goat, the scapegoat that typifies Satan. How much? All of our sins. Not until that happens. Can Christ do what? Finish the work. That's it, my friends. That's it. We are Seventh-day Adventists. So what if I hold on to one sin? Can Christ finish the work on my account? He can't. But what if somebody else gives up all of their sins? Can Christ finish the work on their account? So some are going to have the work finished for them, and they shall be saved. While others hold on to cherished sins, and it will be night for their souls. Probation will close no more opportunities. Which group do I want to be in? Which group do you want to be in? This is the finished work. I'm going to ask you a question now. So what is the finished work? Talk to me. You mean I'm here shouting and I'm, huh, and you can't answer me? What is the finished work now? Surrendering all of our sins. And what is his finished work? To take them away, blot them out, and put them where? On Satan. That's it. So now, does the finished work have one part or two parts? All right. Does the finished work entail one person working or two persons working? Which one? Which one? Who says one? Raise your hand. Only one person working to finish the work. Raise your hand. All right. Two, two, one hand. Two persons working. You raise your hand. Two persons? Hands up. Who are the two persons? Christ and whom? And me. Christ and us. What's my work? To surrender all sins. What's his work? To blot out our sins. This is the finished work. We are Seventh-day Adventist Christians, and this is what separates us from the world. Amen. This is it. Go to verse 29. Look at verse 29 of Leviticus chapter 16. Now we know this. Tenth day, seventh month, is called what day? Day of atonement. Look at verse 16. Uh, verse 29, rather. Whose work is seen in verse 29? Whose work? God's work? Christ's work or man's work? Tell me. You have to teach this. Talk to me. We're in class. Whose work is in verse 29? It's my work. Your work. It's man's work. So whose work is in verse 30? Whose work is in verse 30, my friend? Whose work? It's Christ's work. So how many must work together for the work to be finished? Two. Write down Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12, verse 13. Philippians 2, verse 12, verse 13. I'll start you off. You finish it. Work out your own salvation. Finish it. With fear and trembling. Why? For it is God, number one, which worketh in you both to will and to do of his Good pleasure. Do you see it, my friends? Not my will, but that be done. The two must work. Go to John chapter 5 with me. Put this down, friends. John chapter 5. Two must work together. I hear many people say, my friend, they sing the song, Jesus paid it all. And they sing the song to me, it's all about Christ and we have nothing to do. That's not Bible. That's not Bible Christianity. Because remember it says, the song says, Jesus paid it all. Period? No, no period. All to him I owe. All right, friends. How much must work then? Two must 
Sin has left a crimson stain. He what now? He washed it. How? White as snow. But how much must we give him? All of it so he can wash it white as snow. I was washing a white shirt. You know, you waste all the time and the energy, the electricity. You take the white shirt, look at the color. You're like, did the machine really do its work? I just take that white shirt and I got my brush. And I got some soap and I got some bleach. And I simply made one little scrub. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. White. Back inside there. Washed. Stop. Take out. Yes, ready now. Iron. Yeah, amen. White as snow. John chapter 5. And Christ wants us to come so he can scrub us, friends. But we have to see something to cause us to surrender. And that's where I'm going. Where are we going to? John chapter 5. Look with me. At verse number 15. No, I don't want verse 15. My time is running. Go to verse 19 of John chapter 5. Are we there, my friends? Verse number 19 says, watch carefully. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Let's read now. Come on. The Son can do how many things? Nothing. Nothing. Of himself. So my friends, can we ever be righteous? Can we ever get victory over sin by ourselves? No, we can't. No, we can't. So where is, it? where is the solution? Go to verse 17. Verse 17 now says, But Jesus answered them. Let's all read now. My Father does what? My Father worketh hitherto, and I also work. That's the example. Christ is our quintessential Savior. Christ is our great exemplar. How was Jesus? As a man, get victory over sin, not by himself. He depended upon whom his father, his father worked, and he also worked. Oh, my friends, another of my favorite quotations. Amazing grace. I won't sing this. I wish I could sing. But look at page 319. It says, Men can accomplish nothing without God, and God has arranged his plans so as to accomplish nothing in the restoration of the human race without what? The cooperation of the human with the divine. Hold on. Can Christ do it without us? Yes, yes he can. He's God. Don't put God in a box. Can Christ do it without us? Can Christ make us perfect without our role? Yes, he can. But he would make us robots. And that's not what he wants. That's not what he wants. However, can we do it without him? No, we can't. So now, what must happen? The cooperation with what? The human with the, the put your name there. The cooperation with Andrew and Jesus. Father in heaven, may we have deep heart searching today. Are we really Bible-believing Christians? Are we really Seventh-day Adventists? Do we know who we are? Speak to us, dear God. As Samuel said, Lord, speak, thy servant heareth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let's get back to the quote. Last sentence, it says, the blue words, the part. Man is required to sustain is what, friends? Immeasurably what? Small, but what, friends? Yet, in the plan of God, it is just that part that is needed to make the work a what? A success, as I always say, in a ratio, who has the bigger part? Christ or me? Christ or us? Jesus. How much of it? I always say 99.99% is all God's part. What is my part in the equation? Point zero. 
one person as it's an immeasurably small, immeasurably small. But it is the part that is needed to make the life work a success. I must burn the works of him that sent me while it is what? Death can come at any time. The close of my salvation and yours at any time. When must we surrender? It is when, my friends, right now, right now. And friends, God is going to do five things to lead us to surrender. You need to write them down. We did not come to church to hear a man speak, but to hear God speak through the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. We are here to be trained as much as we can due to circumstances beyond our control. Number one, how is God going to get us to surrender all? Number one, he's going to reveal his love to us. Amen. Why do we not present God as loving? Huh? If you don't know the God of love, how can you present a God who is loving? You can't. Have I experienced his love? Number one, and notice, we love him because what? He first loved us. Put that down. Love. Oh, you want scriptures? John 3, 16. You want text? 1 John 4, 19. John 3, 16, 1 John 4, 19. Love. That's it. Number two, he is going to convict us of our sin. That's how he will get us to surrender. Convict us of our sin. Now, and once he convicts us of sin, what is the third thing? What must we do? When convicted of sin, we must now watch surrender. Number three, surrender. And friends, number three, and once we surrender, what will Christ do for us? Number four, if any man confess his sins, God is what? Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Number four, he pardons. Number four, he forgives. Number four, he treats us as if we never sin. This is what God does for us. Step number four. That's it, friends. Forgiveness, pardon. He treats us as if we never, ever sin. Number five. What happens next? Go back into sin. Go back into sin. What would he do then? Give us power not to return to sin. John chapter 5, verse number 14. Go and finish it. You know it. Go and what? And sin no more. John chapter 5, verse number 14. One more scripture. John chapter 8 and verse number 11. Go and sin no more. That's the finished work, my friends. And think about this. If we go and sin no more, can Christ now finish the work? Can Christ now finish the work and take all of my sin, all of your sin, and place them upon the originator, the progenitor of sin, that old dragon? That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Will Christ then be able to finish the work? Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in the church. Himself in me. Himself in you. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly, perfectly perfectly reproduce in us then, then, then he will come to claim us as his own. It is our privilege not just to look for, but to hasten, to hasten his coming. Do you want to hasten it, friends? Do you want to hasten it? Do you know what we're studying right now is water to our thirsty soul? Imagine you're being beaten up all days in the week. You're wondering, questioning your salvation throughout the week. Those of you who are local here, safe to serve international online, first time viewers, you're wondering, am I in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ? Where is the assurance? We always sing, blessed 
assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, my friends. Where is the blessed assurance? Look at the screen. When the doctrine of justification by faith was presented, ironically, providentially, at the Rome meeting, it came to many as what? Water comes to whom? The thirsty traveler. What is that doctrine? The thought. That the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us, given to us, not because of any merit on our part, but as a free gift from God, seemed the word, friends, a precious thought, red word, the enemy of man, the enemy of God, is not what? Willing that this truth should be how? Clearly presented why does satan despise what we're studying now next phrase red words because for satan knows that if the people receive it fully satan's power will be what broken Amen. you're going to be set free today broken my friends do i need more of this do i need more all right broken Read all of it. If Satan can control minds so that doubt and unbelief and darkness shall compose the experience of those who claim to be the children of God, Satan can overcome them with what? Temptation. No more doubting. Darkness of mind. Am I going to be saved? Uh, come on, friends. Have the blessed what? Assurance that whom? Jesus is whose? Jesus is mine. Come taste and see. Let, let, me, close, let me close off now. Yeah. Wrap this up now. Yeah. And once we have this experience, now the work is being finished in us. It will never be finished completely until we die. So never you say it is finished in you. No, it's being finished. It's continual, continuous. It, 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 amen. You get the point. And once it is being finished in us, what are we to do now? It's time. It's time. That they may get the opportunity to have the work finished in them. Now, what will Christ then do thereafter? Say what now? It is done. It is finished. Probation closes. Watch this. And then, what will God pour out upon us when the work is finished in us? Now, friends, when you die, the work is finished. But is there another event that tells us the work is finished? Do, do you know? You Father in heaven, please, Lord. Do you know what that event is? That when it comes and you make the right decision, it's the right decision, the work is finished in you. That's the last test. It's the mark of the beast. I'm going to prove that because I have realized many of us think it's simply a cliche. Sometimes I ask questions, you all give me the same answer, even when the answer is incorrect. Everything is Sunday law. But, but let me tell you something. We're going to prove from Scripture at the Sunday law, when we make the right decision, at that time, the work is finished in us. Watch this. Exodus chapter 40. Go there with me. Let's wrap this up. Where are we going to, my friends? Exodus chapter 40. Friends, when night is coming naturally, hear me, I don't want any one of us to sleep right now. When night is coming, a long day at work, long day at school, virtual school, home school, as the day begins to wane, you mentally become drained. You get tired, and so it is sometimes in Bible studies, in sermons. But please don't sleep on this one, please. Look at verse number 33. The Bible says of chapter 40 of Exodus, it says in verse number 33, and Moses reared up the court 
round about the tabernacle, underscore tabernacle, and the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. Let's read the next five words. What it says, my friends, together. So, finish it. Moses did what? Finish the work. Now, contextually, what work did Moses finish making? What was it? The sanctuary, the temple, the tabernacle. Question now, who are God's tabernacles? Who are God's temples? Who are God's sanctuary? That's us. So what happened? Once Moses finished the tabernacle, is what God is going to do for us once we work with him to get the work of salvation finished in us. Does anyone know what came from heaven? Once the work of the tabernacle was finished, it says cloud. What comes to mind? Cloud, cloud, rain. Stephen, remember that? Cloud, rain. Rain. Glory. How old is she? 20 months. 20 months and sing rain? Father in heaven. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have thou perfected praise. To steal the enemy and the avenger. Matthew 21 and Psalm 8. Bless us now as we close. It's evident your presence is here. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Matthew 21 was the actual scripture my family read for Sabbath worship yesterday. And that text says, out of the mouth of babes, thou hast perfected praise. Imagine that. What a signature God has given to me today. Look at verse number 34 now. Then, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the what now let's read and the glory of the Lord did what now fill the tabernacle what happened the glory of God filled the tabernacle once the work was finished come to verse 35 and Moses underscore this now key and Moses was not able to enter underscore that he was not able to enter the tent. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. I'm going to prove now. When the sun the Lord is passed, the same thing happens. Not to a literal tabernacle, but to all of us. Go to Revelation chapter 15. Where are we going to, my friends? Oh, former rain, latter rain. This is our theme. Revelation chapter 15. Look at verse number 2. Tell me, in verse number 2, do you see God's people, what do they get victory over? It says the beast. It says the image. It says the mark. Do they make the right decision? Look at verse 3. You see how I'm rushing? And they sing whose song? The song of Moses, the song of the Lamb. Go to verse number 8 now. Verse 8, let's read slowly. Slowly, brother, have a seat. Verse 8, slowly. Verse 8, slowly it says, and the what now? And the temple was filled with what? Smoke from the glory of God and from his what? Power. And no man was able to enter into the temple. What time period is this? In Revelation 15, the time of the mark of the beast. When the plagues are about to fall, it's a repetition of Exodus chapter 40. When the work is finished in our bodily temple, then the cloud comes. And the glory of God will fill each one of us if we make the right decision. Amen. Then comes Revelation 18. And I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power. And what? Finish it. And the earth was lightened with what? The glory of God. 
The work is finished within us. But friend, it's so sweet. I said, Lord, if I preach this, any Bible student will ask me, where's your second witness? It's beautiful, but give me a second witness. Why? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be what? Established. You want laddering? That cloud? The glory of God filling you? Lord, finish the work weird in me. The second witness is Solomon's temple. Solomon, go to second Chronicles chapter 5. Let's bring this to a close. Second Chronicles. Is it beautiful, my friends? Amen. Lord, finish the work in me. Bring the cloud. Fill me with your glory. And my friend, how did God make man? In his glory. Again, how did God make man? In his glory. In his image. Likeness. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Look at verse 1. 5. Brother, five. Second Chronicles chapter five. Look at verse one. Thus are the what, friends? Come on, are we there? Thus are the work, underscore work, that Solomon, not Moses now, Solomon, made for what? The house. Who must be God's house? Us of the Lord was finished. And then he dedicated it. Go to Second Chronicles 7 now, and let's see what happened. Second Chronicles chapter 7, look at verse 1. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, dedicating the temple, what happened next, friends? The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering, the sacrifices, let's read now, and the glory of the Lord. What now? Feel the house. Hold on, don't jump for joy yet. Go to verse number two. And the priests could not what? Ah, my friends. Why could they not enter? The priests could not enter into the house of God because, let's read now, the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. A second witness, come on, come on. Verse number three, and the people Worship God. When the final crisis of worship comes and we make the right decision, what will God send down? Cloud, but also what? Fire, 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 who is a symbol or who is the symbol of fire representing the Holy Spirit. Is this not Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 4? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to evangelize. This is, Lord, finish the work in my home, among my spouses, my spouse, among my children, among my siblings. Lord, finish the work. Beloved, I close right now. Three, three. It's so sweet. It is so sweet. I get excited. But no diabetes. Amen. It's sweet. Sweeter than the what? The honeycomb. If we profess to be a Seventh-day Adventist, you must understand it's a finished work. Seventh-day Adventists understand the finished work. Because God created the world in how many days? Six. 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 And then he rested on the seventh. God blessed the seventh day, hallowed it. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy, a sign of my creation, a sign of a finished what? A finished work. I finish. So how can you go to a Seventh-day Adventist church and have the pastor, elder, deacon, youth, leader tell you you'll be sinning until Christ comes and that we can never get victory over sin? And even if they don't say that verbatim and verbally, by their lifestyle and worship, 
They are telling you we can never get victory over sin. They are not biblically a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Amen. We are Seventh-day Adventists. A finished work. Please, friends, don't let me cut the Bible study here. Please. I want to encourage you. Look at the screen. Write these texts down. They all have to deal with finish. This is where God wants to bring us to a mountaintop, spiritual, elated experience. We want spiritual euphoria. Amen. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, your home, your salvation, sitteth not down first, and count the cost, whether you have sufficient to what? Finish it, lest happily, after you have laid the foundation, you are not able to finish it. All your family members and co-workers begin to mock you, saying, you see that professed Seventh-day Adventist? He was not able to finish. But where is the encouragement, Pastor? Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Let's read this together. What it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun the good work in you will what? Perform. Perform means to finish it. Is that hope? Yes. yes. Count the cost. And that's what we did. We counted the cost. Can I finish it? Cooperate with Jesus. Yes, you can. And if you start with him, you can finish it. Mountaintop experience. Oh, I love this one. Hebrews 12, verse 1. What must we do first? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, we so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us do what? My part, your part. Lay aside every weight. And the sin which does so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Who is he? The author and what? Finisher of our faith is that hope. You're not going to leave here without some hope. Amen. Every meal you cook, you have a special ingredient. You don't make, oh, come on. <laughs> I was going to say curry, a curry dish without your turmeric. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 4. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall what? Finish it. How will Zerubbabel finish the house? Verse 6. The Lord says now unto the same person, Andrew, not by might, nor by power, but by what? My spirit, Zerubbabel. Andrew, put your name there. Sincere Seventh-day Adventist, sincere Bible-believing Christian, you can finish the work. Hope, my friends. The devil is beating upon us all throughout the week. Where's the hope? Doc, where's the hope? Revelation 10, verse 7. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, last angel, last message, when he shall begin to sound what, friends? The mystery of God should be what? Finished. What is that mystery of God? That should be finished. Seventh angel. Last angel, last message, Colossians 1, 27. The mystery of God among the Gentiles is what, friends? Christ in you, the hope, that's hope, the hope of glory. Verse 28, which we preach that we may present, red words, every man how? Perfect, perfect in Christ Jesus. Hope, my friends. May I give you one more? Then we're out of here. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. What does Paul write? I have fought a good fight. I have what now? Finished my course. I have what? Kept the faith. Verse 8. 
What is awaiting Paul? What may also await us? A crown of righteousness which God, the righteous judge, shall give unto me. But not unto me only, but unto all them who love his appearing. Seventh day Adventists looking for his appearing. But the work must be what? Genesis chapter 2. Oh, my friend. So how can, we won't finish today. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. The Sabbath, a finished work. Put it down. Verse 1 through verse 3. Are you a seven-day Adventist now? You must believe in a finished work. No true seven-day Adventist teach. There's no such thing as 1844, October 22nd. Because that is when Christ finishes the work. Hebrews chapter 4, what day must we keep? Verse 3, verse 9, verse 10, verse 11. What day must we keep as a sign of a finished work? The very day Christ ended creation on and rested that Sabbath. That's the same day we must keep true seventh day Adventist Christians. A finished Burp, my friends. Romans chapter 9. What will he do, friends? Then God can do what now? Come on. For God will what? Finish the work. And what? Cut it short in righteousness. For a short work will God do upon the earth. Friends, one breaking news. One vibrant bulletin. We only have a short time to cooperate with Jesus to have the work finished in us. We only have a short time. Death can come at any time. The Son of the Lord is right upon us. And in between that, we can grieve God's Spirit. We don't have much time, only a short time. Short time. How will you spend it? Will you give God your heart? If so, come to the front right now. Right now. Right now. Short work? Not much time. How will you respond? You see your need? Let's have a word of prayer. A prayer of consecration. I profess to be a seventh day Adventist, a Seventh day Adventist, and I want God to finish that work in me. I want to cooperate with Him to have a finished work. Safe to serve online, join us. Join us. Lord, finish that work in me. May I assist others that you can give us the cloud, the rain, the fire you can finish the work in the most holy place of the heaven and sanctuary. Today we receive a mountaintop experience. It's time to go down to where? The valley. You're going into your laboratories now. Please put into place what you learned in class today. If you can, meet with me. Father in heaven. Thank you for answering our prayers that you would reveal yourself to us out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. You place your signature on this message. May we go beyond the theory, dear God, as if it's science class. We're in the classroom at church today. We received the theory. Now we're going to cross the campus into the laboratory. The laboratory is our home, our day-to-day -day livelihood. And what we learned in class of theory, we practice in the lab. What we heard today, may we now apply it in the laboratory of life. Lord, we have stood, we have come forth, your people locally, safe to serve online, international, and even first-time viewers. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. 
he who hath begun the good work will perform, will finish it. Not by my might, not by our power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. Thank you. Save us, we pray, and prepare us for the baptism on June 26th in Atlanta, Georgia, is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.